I'm Lou Maselli. I have a first and formal confession to make. I'm a Brooklyn guy. <laughs> Don't hold that against me. The small known fact is that two of my daughters were born here in the Bronx, so a part of my heart will always be here. So Bronx, you're in the house. Thank you for joining us. Um, I have a couple of closing comments, and then I have the wonderful opportunity to introduce uh, Nuncio from the Bronx Chamber, who's going to share some closing words himself. And so we're so thrilled he's here today. Um, as, an, as an executive director leading an organization that's been focusing quite a bit on trying to help the city of New York look differently um, at how we engage and train and support a group of talented individuals uh, in the city, um, part of my job, I think, is often to play devil's advocate. So I'm going to do a little bit of that here and offer some reflection, I think, that might be helpful as we collectively move forward. In 2014, we released a paper. It was a policy paper. It was very wonky. It was inside our specific industry and workforce. But we spent a lot of time uh, thinking about the title of that paper. And the title was called Unleashing the Economic Power of the 35%. And the 35%, that percentage, refers to the number of young people between 18 and 24 that are living in New York City, that are neither working nor in school, or is among the group of people that do get jobs, but don't sustain those jobs, and struggle in low wage, lower wage, higher turnover jobs. Um, the reason we thought so much about that title has a lot to do with how we actually have this conversation about this group of talent. And a lot of what was shared here today focused a bit on the challenges that are very real and very clear uh, set out in front of us in terms of providing the right kind of supports that young people will need to be successful. But uh, as a youth developer myself of many years, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that talent's actually right here in this room. It's reflected in many of the people who volunteered and engaged with us and helped us plan for this meeting that are young people themselves. That talent's right within our communities. Um, and that talent is certainly uh, accessible and should be available uh, to all businesses and to all organizations deeply concerned about the direction and the future growth of this great borough. So I raise that to say this. Um, it's fair enough to, to think about the fact that young people in the city of New York in general, uh, some people I've uh, spoken with over the years will say that even being young unto itself is technically a barrier to employment. It's, it's its own kind of bias that we all collectively have. I think there's truth to that. But I think it's up to us to also think about how we frame it. Because in reality, there's always going to be challenges and struggles with young people who are coming up in the world. There's also always going to be a price for that. In our paper, we actually put a number uh, on what we thought uh, the costs for not doing anything for this larger group of people could be. And that figure is $325 billion over the lifetime of this same group of people, this 35% of the total population of 18 to 24 year olds. That's a huge number. It's a number we all have to collectively address and respond to. So what I want to encourage, especially for the smaller and medium sized businesses here as you're thinking about this, the community of people that were here with you today talking about their work are very much focused on how we can make uh, that cost in reality come down for everybody. So Monique, for example, talked about a very specific, high quality sector skills training structure. It does cost resources. Those resources are not those that the employer partners have to bear directly. Uh, it's often government and philanthropic funding uh, and other resources that can help make that happen. But we know that there's a cost. But the cost has a profound return because we know that in reducing uh, the number of people that are in this circumstance, that the city at the local level in terms of community reinvestment and at the city level can profoundly benefit uh, from people being engaged, employed, and mobilized once they are employed. So that it's not simply a matter of getting a young person attached to a job, but helping them develop a pathway with your business community here in the Bronx, there's many ways that young people could move 
from position to position to grow, as they learn and grow, and as they are supported by the organizations represented here today that provide those key uh, supports for them as they grow and learn. So I wanted to share that reflection because I think it's uh, incumbent on all of us to think about how we are working together to create those mechanisms. It's why I asked the secret sauce question of this partnership. Yeah, the uh, Jobs First NYC is one of several that do this, but we actually have 11 such industry partnerships like the ones uh, defi defined and described to you today uh, by Phipps Neighborhoods in terms of the career network. These are all working together structurally in a very targeted way with specific areas <laughs> of the economy to bring value and resources to employers at that hiring point, but also after the hire. So we want you to think about all of that as you move ahead with your work. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Nuncio to talk a little bit about the chamber and about this wonderful directory that they put together. Two uh, quick housekeeping items. First, this is the beginning of a conversation and we hope that you will be joining us for subsequent follow-ups and we had several people make that inquiry. Uh, we do plan to continue to follow up with the employers here as well as others and also to bring the wider community of practice that's concerned with this particular talent development structure in the Bronx and strengthening that. And secondly, for those employers in the room that are moved based on what they've experienced here today, what they've learned, to take action yourself. There is a dark yellow or gold, I'm kind of colorblind, so I can't call the color. There you go, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, sheet that you can check off, that you can just take two minutes before you leave here today. Uh, to talk, uh, to consider ways in which you can engage with us and with others here in the community in the Bronx in terms of developing our future talent. So with that said, Nuncio, a pleasure to have you here. Thanks so much. Come on up. Thank you, Lou. I really appreciate the, uh, the introduction. Uh, my good friend John Calvelli uh, invited me to uh, this uh, great program today. Uh, I didn't know what I was going to get myself into. Uh, <laughs> yesterday I uh, made the uh, reservation to attend. The next thing I know, I was asked to do uh, some closing remarks. So, uh, But I'm glad to be here. Uh, this is a great uh, program. Uh, I think the mission is very important. And uh, the Bronx Chamber of Commerce uh, looks forward to partnering with each of you to make uh, things happen here in the Bronx. Uh, you have a copy of our uh, 2017 Bronx Business Directory. It's the first of its kind. Uh, it has tremendous uh, information in the uh, directory, uh, including uh, uh, culture, tourism, uh, our elected officials. A couple of weeks ago, uh, we had a breakfast and uh, Congressman Serrano attended. And uh, he's been around for 44 years, I think. And he said, Nunzio, we never had a directory, anything like this, not even for elected officials. So, you know, he, he really was very impressed. Uh, this is the first one. Uh, I, I know that uh, it's going to continue to grow. Uh, if you're not a member now, I encourage you to join. Uh, I, I think uh, it's going to grow tremendously in the next couple of years. It's a foundation, and it's going to continue to grow. Uh, I look forward to working with you, and I thank you for coming today, and have a great day. Thank you. On behalf of the SBRT team, uh, Josh First team, um, in particular, I want to acknowledge Denisha, Denisha um, JT Falcone, Denisha. Um, SBRT, JT Falcon, um, could you guys please stand up? Elizabeth um, did a incredible job uh, working on this event for the last um, couple of months. Um, I want to thank uh, Dana and Montefiore for hosting um, all of us here. And I want to encourage all of you to, um, before you walk out, fill out that orange paper that you have um, and um, let us know what you're interested in doing. We will be following up with you. We've been in communication with many of you via email. I think I'm forgetting something, JT. I can't read it. Ah, 
How could I? I want to thank all the volunteers. Can you please stand up? Let's do all the hard work you were doing. Come on, stand up. So, Once again for coming. Um, we look forward to seeing more of you. Bye, drop. <laughs> <laughs>